What's up everyone? It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. Welcome back to another car vlog. So, this video is um, a deeper analysis of what I've already been kind of talking about this entire last week of these reserveless buyouts. And I want to go over something very interesting that I've noticed. So after I put this video about uh, Power 9 will go up, uh, other key cards will go up, uh, and I think it's going to happen. I think there's something going on. I think there's going to be an opportunity that if you are looking to purchase Power 9 or dual lands of any kind, the time is now because what's going to happen is if these other cards that are being bought out, these I call them peripheral side cards. They're just kind of really set collector cards or they're just kind of feel good reserveless cards, nostalgic, whatever the hell you want to call them, maybe used for old school magic. If you are, if you make the bet that these are going to stick and stick on the wall, that means the justification of buying Power 9 it's just gonna it's gonna increase a, a, a natural demand because I think what's gonna happen is people are going to take profits and they're going to want to use those profits for something and eventually the people that have taken profits the most number one thing that I know people buying into is power nine and some dual land assets building up assets on that end because they tend to be the next, the kind of the safe haven that allows also for some of the traders out there to um, receive more equity through trade bait. So it's kind of a recurrent cycle. You sell the reserveless cards you've made profit off of. Then you pick up power nine or um, high caliber cards to essentially receive, um, you know, kind of do the cycle to receive more cards, more equity, to essentially keep rotating the cycle and making, you know, keep building your portfolio. These are some of the trade techniques that I've seen over the years, and it tends to tends to work pretty well if you're able to make that profit. The true engine is the key engine is to have profit made at the level of the reserveless cards question is when is the best time to buy the cards see this is the problem a lot of you guys tend to sit around and not pull the trigger the people that are rewarded in this little game we're playing that called magic the gathering buyouts is people that are willing to put the money up front and to create a demand call it superficial call it you know you know, make, make believe, call it, you know, organic, whatever the hell you want to call it. There is a demand that is created by injection of large sums of money. And we're not talking about small time money. We're talking moves that are larger than most people will ever have to buy singleton cards. And I'm starting to think that one of the things I've noticed is Typical moves are for cheap ass reserveless cards like 50 cents and they move to like $5 or something, okay? Buyouts like that. But the thing is, the demand to resell those cards are never really there and the transaction cost on $5 cards is pretty high and the volatility rate's pretty high. And some, most of those cards that are purchased are like from sets that have high print runs. What's really unique about this particular buyout was it was focused on Arabian Nights, which some people believe have around 2,000 to 3,000 rares or the more rare uncommon version of some of the printings. Now, I don't know if this is gonna stick. I, 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 my gut tells me 
that if if buyers get in, see a couple things happen when buyouts happen some of the people that miss the buyout scramble to buy at prices below the buyout the highest buyout prices just to get some of the cards so for example if elephant graveyard is theoretically at 250 dollars some people will want to buy them at 200 150 dollars and they're willing to put money at that level but the thing is if you don't get enough people buying into the higher price yields closer to the higher prices the buyout will fizzle and in terms of the, the rush the gold rush now eventually the prices will settle and the question is will the buyers that were looking to purchase the cards in the past that missed the rush buy into the buyout themselves over time and is the buy and is the supply the people that bought the buyout and also the people that have sets and other singles they want to sell through natural selling are they willing to let those go at higher prices and not just do a bunch of eBay auctions and if they sell for eBay auctions will they hold and stick at higher price levels very interesting I have a feeling that this Arabian Nights thing is actually going to be very unique more unique than you think Arabian Nights is not one of those that you can just replicate and buy more packs um, and get more cards a lot of these vintage packs are becoming to a point where it's like they're so damn expensive to buy them um, you know a hundred hundred fifty two hundred dollars a pack uh, for the legends antiquities and then Arabian Nights what it's like six hundred to a thousand dollars a pack are you really gonna buy an Arabian Nights pack for six hundred a thousand dollars just for the hopes of getting um, you know a potential reserve list card maybe Maybe they have the thrill of it all. But the problem is the supply of the sealed product is so effing low that the supply, where is it going to come? And I have a feeling that the supply is really stashed into sets. There are people that have sets into uh, these kind of cards that essentially are not willing to let go of their sets. It's producing a stability in the marketplace that's very unique. That's very unique because if you have this stability in the marketplace, people are, uh, the supply is just gonna be, you know, people that are trying to make that quick buck through trades uh, who may have gone early or maybe look at eBay price and wanna flip the card and make you know a profit here and there. It, th that's the only type of trading activity that will occur. Now, with that said, I think there is going to be a trend where supply is going to shorten. Now, here's a question: Is the cards going to stick around? Is the card prices of these? old man in the seas, whatever, going to stay there for a long, 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 long time. Are they going to stay there for a long time and nothing's going to move? When that occurs, you're going to have a situation where if, if people don't buy them for a while, most people got into them much, much cheaper than, than, uh, um, the typical, the typical, uh, person. The thing is, some of the people will probably put them on auction and go ahead and sell them because they they got them in so cheap like you know 10 bucks back in the day for you know whatever maybe it's time to just sell their sell their cards so most people will end up selling their entire set not just sell singleton cards I'm not gonna break up my set to sell a drop of honey I'm gonna sell my entire set and break up all of the cards so what's really intriguing about this whole thing is I think that there might be supply from that end. I'm feeling like this, is that if you see moves in the Power 9, the, the dual lands, people reshuffling profits, 
or if you see new money into into the power nine and dual land and the reserve list cards these buyouts sustain i think you will find that there could be a stability in these buyouts for a long time that's what i think that's what i truly think i think that if if there really is if there really is going to be stability in the marketplace there needs to be kind of this cohesion with multiple areas of the market there needs to be not only stability with the power nine there needs to be stability with the buyouts that occurred stability with the supply that happens with the marketplace itself um, the supply, the set collectors, are they going to say, hey, you know what? This is getting ridiculous. It's like a $10,000 Arabian night set. Why don't I just go ahead and take my profits um, and run? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, are we going to see a floodgate of supply and throw darts into the market and see if people will buy them? My gut feeling tells me that if that happens, then we'll see a correction. Because I don't think people, there's enough market cap four elephant graveyard and all these cards. I don't think it's going to last if many, many, many more collectors go out there and put the cards in the market. Here's the last bit of, bit of things that are happening. Is the dealers. Are the dealers going to put money in to the buyout? Are they willing to up their buy list prices? Is Star City, is Card Kingdom, is all those companies willing to up buy list prices for cards like Ali from Cairo, obscure, obscure cards, Shahrazad, King Suleiman, Island of Wak Wak, all these random cards that have been sitting around for a long time? Or are they going to be afraid to put more new, new money into those cards because of the buyouts? And to then add supply into their store. My bet is that a lot of stores are, you know, have LGS stores. They are not going to put money into these type of buyouts. My feeling with these type of stores is that they are extremely, um, you know, they're they're over leveraged. They need capital for the next new modern magic sets. I don't think. Stores and LGS stores are speculative um, investors of old stuff. I don't see it. But here's the thing. If you see a move, here's the other play. If you see a move with the buy lists of these LGS stores and of larger retail stores, if you see a move of any level, that moves upward, ABU Games, any of those guys, then I think it's going to validate the buyouts a lot. Because what will happen is then there will be a floor for the people that got in of these buyouts to sell. At the minimum, there's going to be a demand. And then the question is, are because there's going to be a point that these LGS stores or these online retailers are going to be like, well, dude, my customers need to have I need to have some stock for these Arabian Nights cards because I don't have any, right? How am I going to accumulate them? Well, I'm going to have to do increase my buy list because the cards themselves are worth so much more. My, my buy list before of a card at $15 has to now increase to a $50 and because they're selling for like $150 or $100. Um, is that going to happen with, with, buy, with buy list? You know, it's going to be interesting. I also do not think, I also don't think that um, Grand Prix, like, and I'm talking about LGS stores at like, um, I'm talking about LGS stores not at, at Grand Prix also. There's stores that are LG, at LGS locations, or uh, I'm sorry, at Grand Prix, that have buy list market prices or hot list prices at their um, the Grand Prix. And if they don't increase their prices or target these reserve list cards, because in the past I saw like Lion's Eye Diamond, um, Candelabra, stuff like that been targeted. But you never see a run of old school cards like If Biff Afrit, for God's sake. Uh, I think that's like a double green, two, 
two uh, mana, and then, you know, it's like a 3-3 flyer and has a hurricane effect immediately when it enters. I mean, these kind of cards are not playables except for old school magic. So will, another interesting thing is, will these companies start doing buy lists for old school reserve list cards and buy into the buy the buyout situations and start accumulating um, stock? And if they do, other than the typical dual lands and the power nine and the tabernacles of the world, whatever, um, I could see I can see the buy list sustaining. I mean, the, the buyout, what's occurring, sustaining, and the valuations um, continue to climb because of stability in the vendor uh, arena. All right, so that's what I got here today. I, I was really looking at this today, all the charts and all the, the buyouts and the changes. Um, I will give you guys a tip. Um, I wouldn't doubt that antiquities cards, um, some of those antiquities cards are going to go up a lot. A lot more. I wouldn't doubt that sealed uh, antiquities, sealed legends are going to be bought out more and more um, in terms of packs and even sealed boxes. I wouldn't doubt that all this stuff is going to climb into new valuations. I, I wouldn't even doubt that maybe 50% uh, to a, a double markup in the next year or two for some of this stuff. Um, if the buyouts sustain naturally, the singles will go up, the sets go up. That means that the seal product has to go up. So it's a very interesting play. All right, guys. Hey, start a conversation about this. I want you guys to tell me what you guys think about the buyouts, um, how you're going to make, how you're going to invest into this or not invest in this. Um, if you're a collector or investor or collector, I want to know, and you have a Arabian Nights set or something, Legends set, are you going to sell this? Or are you just going to uh, hold this because it's a nostalgia, feel-good thing you want to keep for the rest of your life and you want to pass it down to your dogs and, you know, just, you know, die to your grave with an Arabian Nights set? Or are you going to take the cash and walk that fuck away from it all? All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.